Welcome back to the Nerdy Neighborhood, everybody, and welcome back to your Friendly Neighborhood comic show. I'm your host, Lauren, your Friendly Neighborhood, bye, and I'm joined here today by another indie comic creator. Uh, you might have seen him on the show Two Geeks Talking with Kurt Sasso. Um, he's done some other interviews. He's got a great book to talk about with you guys today. We've got Marcus Patton here. How you doing, Marcus? I'm all right. Yourself? Doing good, doing good. It's a rainy Sunday where I am, so... It looks bright with this blue wall, but it's terrible outside. So I'm happy to be here with you, man. <laughs> it's sort of a, a, a an overcast um, uh, Sunday in, in London. So like, you know, just yep. kind of yeah. weather all around, I guess. That sounds like it's pretty common in London, though, unfortunately. I mean, not with global warming. Sometimes it's it's, uh, it's bakingly hot. Like I used to live in the north part of the UK where mm -hmm. it rained all the time. I was like, I'm, I'm up, you know. So that's why I moved down here because of the where it, you know it's. I mean, it used to be quite bad, but then the world started ending. So then there we got no rain, so it's droughts right, and stuff. Right. You know, that's always nice. Not you know having you know, you know this this city isn't uh, designed for any kind of extreme weather. So like you know you get like a like six months like this is okay. It's like God, I'm cold. Oh my God, I can't even breathe. It's too hot. But you know, mm. yeah. Thing. It's a challenge everywhere. I completely yeah. agree. No matter where you are, there's it's either too cold, too hot, too humid, too something, too rainy, like too sunny even now. Like you said, it gets too hot and it's no good. But what is really good is your comic called Here Comes a Dragon Punch, which is what we're kind of talking about today. Um, it's a little bit different than the stuff I usually talk about the show. And I really like that because you really mentioned the show and jump influence and you can see that uh, in the pages here. So tell us a little bit about what this is about. Cause you, I think there's two stories in it, right? Yeah. This, uh, well, basically like um, the, the last two things I did were really dark and gritty and grim. And I was just like, you know, you can only be so air for so long. I was like, you know, I want to do something on the, on the lighter side of things. And so, like, you know, this comic doesn't even have any swearing or, or gratuitous violence in it. So, and, mm -hmm. like, I was just like, um, you know, so, and, um, like, basically, the, the how this uh, comic came about was because uh, I, uh, I, I, um, I was experimenting with how to, how to make comics quicker and everything. And I had drawn this, um, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle and uh, Street Fighter um, fan comic, and I had done it within. I had, I had drawn it within like about like drawn and watercolored it within about two to three hours, and so mm -hmm. it's fully finished. But you know, which is really fast going for me. I thought well, I can do that, and I can I do that for like a proper comic and stuff. And then that's kind of where the initial impetus for this, this came out. Like I need to, you know, basically do this quickly, and then like. Uh, and then just kind of building on it led to like, well, I like the idea of um, of like uh, of of fighting comics and stuff, and you know, again, Shonen Jump, Dragon Ball Z, and all that stuff is you know of how I was born and raised, and then and it's like, well, I um, yeah, so that so the, the desire to make um, a fighting comic came about, and then like um, and then a more of a, a humorous, light-hearted comic than say the other ones, which I, they do have humor in them, but it's really dark, dark, bleak humor, so. And that's how, uh, and then it, it, from, it went from a, a series of like, I think this would be quite cool to um, uh, to incorporate like kind of skits into like, well, actually, how can I flesh that out in a story and everything? And so that's basically how I got I got to where I am. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, um, in terms of uh, in terms of coming up with the characters, like um, uh, like this, uh, the two on screen at the bottom there, they're, they're, they're Ash and August. They're like my general kind of. Like, type of character like kind of big and bubbling kind of thing and then the other main character is Omar and he's, he's more stoic than I normally go with and so like you know would leave uh you know the geese on, on the bottom here and like uh mm -hmm. uh so say so kind of like just how to play with outside my normal wheelhouse of just a you know so yeah that's how that's how that came about like case of like well I'm making the comic anyway I need to build on it and build on it because it can't just be just a series of uh, like vignettes and skits and everything, and then mm. yeah, and then I, so I, I like I really like the idea of um, of coloring it and stuff, and trying to come up with new ways of coloring it. So that's it's like you know that's where that's why it has the palette that it has, it has the, the look that it has, because like essentially I kind of got went down a rabbit hole of like, well if I do this, I do this, I look cool, I look, look dope, and how can I make how can I make something that is really kind of just kind of flat, to, uh, uh, digital coloring look. 
like old and kind of gnarly and stuff and so like i found like a way of putting like an anime filter so it has like a real kind of again like a, a, an old school kind of like uh like you could have like it has an old five of like kind of four color process kind of kind of thing going on top of it and basically yeah. i'm not to uh to to make it sound like i was more interested in the process of making the comic than the actual story of the comic but that's i mean essentially that's how this came about i was more interested in the, how can i make the process of this comic more interesting to me and and and, sp- and speed up and everything and then like uh it's like uh the last uh, comics i've done um i've I've inked them, I've digitally inked them and stuff, and it's like, well, that takes me ages, and it's kind of like it's it's a it's a whole step of like kind of like, you, you thumbnail the thing, then you sketch the thing, then you pencil the thing, then you ink the thing. That's that's an end. that can be in an entire day. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, and if you you know like you know how um there's that saying like um like your um you you uh, the amount of time ta- uh, you the, the amount of work you do um is a lot to the amount of time you give it and stuff so like you know most job most things can be done if you go well this is only going to take me three hours that's how long it will take you and stuff and guess what well, if i have all day i'm going to be here for you know i'm going to be you know you can be have it where like a page can take you like three to four days and stuff and while well, there are some people who uh, who make really great um bits of work when they, they when they uh, when they labor over it i'm not one of those guys i'm kind of like well, I've been doing this for three days, and like literally, the like the the first half day was like the like like about the half a, half a day where I actually got a lot of stuff done. That is as good as it was. So I just need to trim the fat off on either side and kind of cram it down. So that's again, and then that's that's why so that's why it's it's using uh, it's a penciled like it's digital pencils and um and flat colors underneath it and stuff. Again, like I like how I was more interested in like the process. And then, like, I was like, well, I, what kind of story can I tell with this? And so, like, you got like how, um, um, like, uh, like the, the basic gist of the story with Ash and August is that they were uh, they've uh, jumped into um, uh, they've crashed this tournament being held by the uh, by a by uh, by Ash's rival clan, and the, the rival clan saying, well, like, if you compete in this tournament here. I'll, I'll give you the secrets to unlocking the the dragon flame, and it's like, and then like um, and so that's and so they compete in the tournament and they win the right to learn how to unlock the dragon flame. And uh, August basically can just unlock it. Um, spoilers for the end of the comic, but she can just unlock it with uh, just by just sheer natural talent and stuff. Uh-huh. But because um, Ash is older and um, uh, was in a um, uh, in a dojo being taught the wrong moves uh mm-hmm. they don't have they can't unlock the dragon flame because it's because they're uh, they're sl- they're older and so the n- next part of the uh, book would be like well why can't i unlock uh, my dragon powers and how can i unlock my dragon powers and stuff mm-hmm. and so i mean like the the the, uh, the the great will be the fact that like it comes naturally to august because she's younger and it's just like oh well just you know you know, you know, I mean, you learn a, a new language. It's easy to learn a, a new language when you're like a child because you're receptive yes, all yeah. to it. But like once you've uh, been speaking, say, English for too long, you don't uh, know how to. Uh, there are certain syllables and like and the way uh, our syntax goes. It's just it gets a lot more difficult. So like you know, you can't. Yeah, so that's that's going to be the, the the course of their story going forward in the next few issues of like um how can uh, both of them unlock the their dragon flames to compete in uh, the tournament because that's where this only is leading to like a, a, a big kind of tournament like uh, like uh, like uh, Enter the Dragon because like you know all fighting comics should basically be just a riff on Enter the Dragon because it's the greatest movie of all time and that's <laughs> going to be combat you know that's going to be their storyline and then uh, Omar is going to be um, storyline is basically like um, he's trying to uh, get He's trying to get uh, uh, behind. Uh, he's, try- he's basically trying to break in and steal some stuff from uh, this big corporation thing that are, mm-hmm. that are doing nefarious things behind the scenes. And I totally have their storyline plotted out, and I'm not making off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's 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 you know, that's that's this that's uh, storyline. Uh, that's gonna be the main storyline for the next few uh, chapters. It will the shift will go mainly to Ash 
and and August because it's more of a straightforward linear kind of method and I have a plot for that whereas I have vague ideas what I'm going to do with Omar and some of the other side characters I'm going to be doing stuff with as well. That's awesome. I love how uh, I one think is... I might have gone on to, to, did I not, yeah. I, no, I it's okay. <laughs> Talk as much as you want. That's it's your story. I think that's the most important thing, right? Is every creator gets to talk about their story, their book, and as you really talked about their process as much as they want and be able to articulate in your own words rather than me or someone else coming up with it. And I absolutely love how much you talked about building the process. I think so many people talk about the actual product and the story we get, and we should because it's great. But hearing that beginning process and what led up to, okay, now where's the story at is really cool to hear. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. I mean, like, it's, it's, that, um, like that thing of like, uh, uh, like, uh, no, no, I'm, I, I just kind of a uh, Game of Thrones reference, but I think I'm going to get that wrong. Like, it's like, are you, <laughs> are you, are you, is it, is it a thing that's being, uh, char character driven? Or is it a thing that's kind of like being plot driven? Like you're going to hit these beats right. anyway and stuff. And I think with um, with 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 this, the um, the characters are um, are big and bold enough that like if you just throw them into a scenario, you're going to get something interesting coming out the other end of it. And then like um, like trying to uh, like skew with the um, like the expectations. Like like the page you just before, like um, mm -hmm. I wasn't mm -hmm. going to. Uh, no, I was going to do no. I'm, I even like the 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 tournament was going to be much more straightforward, kind of like kind of fighting thing. But I was talking mm -hmm. to my wife and she said, "Yeah, but that's been done. Can you not do something different?" And that's where the um the the, the chess boxing and the um oh. the, great, the great British Bake Off thing came in because of like what like what what is intense in competition, but like also can be funny, but also they kind of like uh be really good representation on on uh as a comic, you know, like. And chess is surprisingly difficult to draw. Uh, those pieces yeah. are like, like it's like you see them all the time. It's case of like horses are just like, why? And I like drawing horses. <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was both yeah. a fun yeah. and one of more laborious pages. Like I find like anything <laughs> above, anything above four or five, four, three or four pounds. Case of well, that's that's a long time. Like it's it, it once it gets to the six pounds. Case of well, this is going to take you. Like the day, that no matter what you do, no how quick you know, that this is going to take you the day, even if you have, even right. like this, you've got like not that many uh, backgrounds and stuff. Yeah, no, that makes a ton of sense. And yeah, I think chess in particular, it, it looks like it should be simple, but is not easy to draw at all. Um, yeah. But I also say this is about who can't draw worth hell. So sorry, everybody. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I, I love that this is character driven. I also love how you do have really you know, strong story, you know, with the tournament and all that, but this still, the the art style and everything, it feels like a slice, a slice of life kind of story, but with some extra drive into it. And I think that's something you really can't find nowadays. You either get a slice of life or you get something that's more intense and driven. You don't really get both. So you have both here, I think. Oh, fantastic. No one's ever put myself <laughs> stuff like that. Well, I, I, I like that. Thank you. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's one of those things like like you can it's it's really easy to draw the big bombastic things because mm. basically like you know, someone being hit in the face it's like no matter which way you cut it that's that's someone getting hit in the face but like the minutia of just kind of like someone eating someone drinking and stuff like that's these everyday things it's like like how do you make them interesting how you know and like also because you don't mm. you know unless you unless like you're Norman Rockwell and you spend ages studying it like it's like yeah of course. I'm just you don't pay attention to how this thing goes like you, you know like i pay attention to how like oh that's what a, a leg looks like when he is it's being kicked in the air but like mm -hmm. where, where exactly is your elbow when you're holding a like a like a like a milkshake and drinking and stuff like guys like you know right. like where, where is your hands and stuff and like you know it could be so easy just to get it wrong and stuff you know hopefully i haven't got it wrong yeah. like you know like, yeah just like, I yeah. think you did. I think you did great here. I mean, even just seeing them, you know, eating pizza and drinking, like you said, these really minute things that we do as humans, they're really hard to draw and really hard to articulate on the page. Yeah. And I think you do such a great job doing it. Like it, it feels like it. This feels like it could be a Saturday morning cartoon, but could also be like a late night cartoon, depending on which way you take the story. Fingers, fingers, fingers. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, you know, not. To, 
I mean, I wouldn't say no to it being the next uh, TMNT, you know. Or Spawn, <laughs> right. Or Wildcats or whatever, or X-Men, you know. Or, or yeah, you definitely got that TMNT yeah. style. I totally see that now. I could I could see a crossover and, and all that. Again, fingers, fingers, fingers. <laughs> Before I shuffle off this mortal, I do really want to uh, be draw a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic, like, properly, like, sound like, here you go, draw that. That, that, that would be... um. That would be quite cool. I, I would, I would, yeah. I would, yeah. Yeah, I think they're kind of back on the rise because I mean they've been around forever, obviously, but um, you know, even a decade or two ago, it was kind of quieter again, and and now they're. I feel like they're having a resurgence, which is kind of cool. So hopefully yeah. that keeps going, and you'll be able to jump right on board. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Well, tell people where they can find us because you know people can get here comes the dragon punch. Anytime now, so where can people get it? Where are their options? So, to, uh, if you uh, to get it for free, uh, you can get it on uh, on my webtoons uh, or uh, via my Substack, which is Marcus Patton's Substack and um, nice. uh, Art Station, which is Mark Art Art Station Marcus Patton One. Uh, basically, I'm going to be uploading chapters every uh, every Friday. Um, so like yeah, so that's so the first three chapters are up on uh, are up on on there now. If you want to support me and support this and don't want to wait, the first issue is up fully now on my Patreon, plus some behind the scenes shenanigans and uh, like making of and stuff. And I've also got like the f uh, first issue up on my Etsy with some additional artwork. So like it, the, the Patreon is basically like w uh, with like the comic plus additional like here's what i'm doing my making of process the the thing i was talking about for 20 minutes before but condensed and mm -hmm. uh and, and on the etsy it's basically it's just the comic plus some additional artwork so you can get uh so you can get, even get the comic now for full for, uh, fully on patreon or my etsy or you can read the chapters as they're released on um on um on webtoons my Substack, and my art station so in theory, the uh, if everything goes according to plan, um, my um, uh, the uh, the first five chapters of issue one are going to be uh, uh, they 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 all finished. So they will be up and done within the next well, what, next two weeks. And mm -hmm. uh, depending how quickly I can do it, the week uh, after that will be uh, the first chapter of issue two plus. The um, uh, it will be up on the uh, Patreon and the Etsy, like with behind the scenes shenanigans and stuff. And um, I, I am planning to do a physical release, but um, I don't. I basically I've got like my first issue, my first comics I released. I basically I got I I released I, I print too much of one and not mm -hmm. enough of the other. And I don't. And considering this is a color comic, as opposed to a black and white comic, I don't want to be like. Uh, stuck with a whole bunch of just you know and so my plan is for when I would go up to um oh, cause I'm attending Glasgow Comic Con in uh in mm. June the 3rd and the Lakes, Dis Lakes District Comic Con in sometime in Albany I'm going to have like the first um one and a half issues maybe printed off that's kind of like an ash can kind of thing to sell at the Comic Con so that'll be, that'll be limited like, like, kind of like uh, about maybe 50 to 75 kind of like and then it basically when i got the entire first um five issues worth of comic mm -hmm. i'm going to um uh, release it as a kind of a like a tray tunker bun kind of thing mm -hmm. unless of course someone goes that man can draw comics really well i'm gonna hire him to draw this really big important project that takes up all my time right. unless a massive comic book artist within the interim that's the plan <laughs> So yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Well, it's cool that you have all these different ways to get it. And then you also have these different options for like, you can get just the comic free, cool, or you can just pay literally just a tiny bit extra. Like I think your Patreon is like three fifty a month and you yeah. get the comic and all the goodies and then you get everything as it gets released, which is really awesome, man. So I think it's really cool that you are giving all these options for what people can do. And you're giving people the opportunity to get more as they're able and want to. Yeah. I mean, that's like um, yeah. Like it's like the last. Yeah, it's just trying. 
it, it's trying to basically be able to pivot to what people actually want and stuff and kind of like you know, mm -hmm. you know cause like this yeah you know, i also want to get this out as quickly as possible so people don't kind of get um bored and go, oh you released that thing like six seven weeks ago okay cool well i've ignored you now but so it's constantly being released and it's going so oh it's always in the consciousness and i always got you know in theory i'm not just gonna orphan it because i've got like oh hi by the way the next uh, chapter's out and stuff so like you know just trying to keep it interesting to uh to the uh, potential fans and stuff and to me so i don't kind of get like lost in the mimosas of like i've released yeah. it and now it's to the wind and i've put it and they won't come and i can cry <laughs> and stuff so it's like, no no you actually have to do some work here marcus and stuff yeah. <laughs> I totally hear that. Well, I love how, you know, in tune you are uh, being with your fans and everybody that supports you and finds your work. I think that is, you know, one of the most important things in the world to do. It's also one of the hardest things to do. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming on here, Marcus. Any last minute things you want to share about Here Comes the Dragon Bunch? Um, we'll say like uh, the first three chapters up on Webtoon. The, um, if you go on my Instagram, which is Marcus Patton Jaws, uh, there is a. Uh, I'm going to be doing a bunch of like draw this in your style kind of things because be, I think it'd be cool to see other people draw my characters. But mm -hmm. I have fuck all followers on Instagram, so basically that gets no traction or algorithm. So if you see this, right. and, oh, I can draw. Please come and draw. <laughs> I, I mean, I've been quite glad to see other people's interpretations. But yeah, essentially, um, I'm going um, to uh, say the. So, uh, released every uh, every Friday a webtoon Substack and and art station it's on the uh, patreon and stuff uh, mm -hmm. I I'm planning I'm planning because I like making hurdles from my own back I'm, uh, like um, to do like a you know Dave uh, uh, stray bullets like it's basically like mm -hmm. a square mm -hmm. comic and stuff well that yeah. that fits yeah. perfectly for a uh, an, an Instagram post so mm -hmm. like I just so, to, so I can play with the characters outside the main continuity storyline. I'm also going to be kind of doing like, uh, like, uh, like th that. Basically, I'm going to be um, uh, releasing like inst Instagram stories or uh, comic for the uh, for one of the uh, side characters and stuff. Because I couldn't Ooh. figure out how to work them into like the um, into the main storyline without basically mm -hmm. increasing the uh, page count. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it's hard getting traction on like the, the different social medias until you figure out what kind of floats their boat. So if you get if you know Twitter, then you go to Instagram and you're like, how do I Instagram and vice versa? So um, but that's Twitter. really awesome. I bounced off Twitter about like my, my plan was like, I'm going to wait out to the end of the year and then I'm going to contact everyone on my Twitter. Let's go. Oh, hi. Do you, I just mm. let you know I'm leaving. And then I went to look and like I was nothing but porn bots. It's like, like <laughs> Jeez. I, what what's going on here? Like I I, I, I nothing about my uh, my activities on would indicate that I need um, need the services <laughs> of available young women. I'm happily married and I'm into comics. Like you know, you know. <laughs> right. Anyway, so that's 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 what I'm going to deal with. It's so, yeah. very weird. It's very weird. Well, at least you know we can come find your comic whenever we have to deal with that stuff. <laughs> I know we talked over here. I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I was just saying, um, at least we can come find your comic whenever we have to deal with that stuff. Because I have to yeah. deal with every once in a while, too. And that's half the reason I'm not active on Instagram a lot. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, anyway, we can, we, we can moan about the problems with social media and the uh, myriad. Or, you know, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm just getting into Reddit and Discourse. The Discord, that seems to be uh, about more my speed. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I really I'm enjoy Discord on. as well. It's been easier to connect with. Uh, both creators like you that come on the show and uh also you know other podcasters and fans of you know this channel and other channels um it's a lot more personal which i like with discord a lot more direct connection so but yeah. i'm super excited about this book i'm so glad it's out um did you guys watch and here comes a dragon punch is available now um all the ways marcus listed that you can get it i'll put in the description below so you can just click a couple times and you'll have a great comic one way or the other and hopefully some extras if you have the extra money and you want to get those goodies they'll be there for you and otherwise we'll see you guys next time in the